make sure you subscribe click that little bell icon to be notified of upcoming videos support us on patreon like us on facebook and instagram at model railroad techniques please have a look at my new website www.modelrailroadtechniques.com welcome back guys and girls darren from mrt ever wondered about leopard spots not the african animal but a realistic way of coloring your rock formations in this video i will walk you through this technique let's get in the layout room and get started Okay, the first thing we need to look at is making the various washes for this. Now, the first one on the far left is a yellow okra type color. So basically, this is you don't water this down too much. So you put a rather large splodge on the bottom of the container there, and just enough water to, to cover it. Now, the middle color is the burnt sienna, which is the same way, and the, the final one on the end there, which is a, a burnt umber, uh, you need to water down a little more. That's sort of your overwash, and then we tie it all in with um, a black color. So. You see what I'm doing here is mixing it through because I just use some cheap artist type paints. Now, you really got to mix it through and it's really a, an exercise of starting to learn your paints. You can see it's obviously quite splodgy on the bottom there. Every now and again you'll see I'll just lap it up to the sides there because it's quite an opaque wash once it goes on. So it's just very, very important you get it mixed in properly because if you don't, that uh, just makes splodgy mess. And as you can see, that's uh, coming together quite nicely. Still a little bit of uh, muck on the bottom there, but uh, a lot better than it was. So that's uh, probably just about ready to be done. So you do that with all the all the washes, just mix it through and get it uh, nice and, uh, you just mix it through nice, uh, nice and thoroughly to, to get it going. Now that last wash, I've put a little bit too much water in it. So you'll see me in a sec go through and add some more paint but this one's the the wash that sort of ties the other two together to a certain degree so um, yes there is a fair bit of water in that uh, a little bit of paint but you only pay a few bucks so you, you will waste a little bit in the end but uh, the end product is uh, quite realistic so same as before you just mix it through um, as I said that the paint these paints I'm using are a little bit splodgy on the, the cheaper end of the, the spectrum so it's just a matter you get a methodically work through to, to make sure you get a mix through. Now you can see I sort of every now and again I'll just lap that paintbrush up against the side just to see one if I've mixed it in properly and what the, the wash actually how it's going to look so it still needs a, a fair bit more mixing there so uh, I won't bore you with the rest of that uh, we'll get on to the next part. As most things model railway um, you can see in the middle there the drawing ink that I've got there so I make a, a black wash out of that. Uh, initially I did try starting that but um, Indian ink's actually quite expensive, so I ended up using uh, just a black paint of that same brand. So, same sort of uh, outcome, probably not quite as vivid as the black, uh, black Indian ink, but... Uh... Okay, so this is the area I'm going to look at uh, applying this wash to. You can sort of see the sort of top left screen there is like a little wall. So that stuff all in between all those rocks is that ground goop that I made up in a previous video. I'll link to it above um, shortly. So the first thing I'm doing is applying the yellow ochre wash. Now, you, you want to do it in sort of thirds. Um, so you have a third of the, the area with that one, and then you just keep methodically working your way through. Now, it's always a good idea to leave a little bit of the, the white or the grey coming through and going from there. Right, the next uh, colour I'm adding there is the burnt sienna, which is sort of that orangey red colour. Now, as you're probably looking at this, this looks absolutely horrendous, these colours. Now, it's a real trial by error I'm going through on this video. I've used this technique on other areas using different colours, but I just wanted to trial it on this one so you can come along on the journey with me. So, as I said, that colour is absolutely horrendous at this point in time, but trust me, you add, as you start adding the layers and the texture, to that um, you will find that those those that color or those two colors will tone down quite a bit so it's just a matter of adding another third you can see I'll leave uh, little patches there um, of the the whitey gray colors coming through and some of the other rocks this next part's just obviously just going back and those other rocks obviously they were a little bit harder to get to some of the different part of uh, the layout there so um, to reach over to get to that now the first two colours, it's not all that important that you dry it, let it dry between each of them. So, because you, you can sort of use it as a bit of a wet palette and sort of meld the colours together. Because obviously, once you start putting the overwashes in to tie it all together, um, it's not really going to matter too much. So, it's a matter of just splodging it around best you can. Uh, 
All right, so at, at, at this point, what I'm doing, I'm starting to add the bird umber, which is meant to start tying all these three colors together. So if you remember correctly, this is a bit more of a, a watered down type wash. So it's just a matter of splodging it over the whole lot. And you do, it is important that you let the other two layers dry first, because uh, you don't want it just meshing into one big mushy mesh. Um, with all the you know all the colors melding in together so it's just a matter of methodically working through splodging it on um, over the whole lot and you'll, you'll, you'll see that it does start tying together I'm sort of looking back on this video now and the burnt sienna I think might be a little bit too overpowering so I'd probably look at possibly another type of color that's not quite as vivid as that one so you, you will see later on how I try to correct that wrong um, and it actually comes up quite all right so it's just a matter of methodically working your way through uh, the whole scene or the area that you're doing and splodging that all over um, that wash right now it just looks like it's just a brown mess but trust me uh, once that sort of starts drying down or drying out I should say you'll see the other colors start to slowly to come through Okay, so you can see I've already started applying some of the black wash there, particularly to that wall at the top. So initially I started using an Indian ink wash, but I think it was just a bit too vivid and a bit too black effectively. So the one I'm using there is just a cheap acrylic paint, very, very watered down, mixed the same way as I did the other paints. So it's also prudent to, to point out at this point in time, you really need to make sure all other layers are completely dry before doing this. Obviously, they just it'll just ruin it. Um, I'm not all that happy where I'm painting there, um, the, the ground goop type, it's just I don't think it actually works all that well so I definitely won't be doing that again but where it comes into its own is the little rocky outcrop I'm doing there and also the, the stone wall just above it. So it's not going to matter too much regarding the ground goop because I will put other shrubs and bushes and sort of hide some of that but just um, lesson learnt that I don't think that, that part of it has actually worked with leopard spotting. So the next part of this technique is uh, just a, applying a very light uh, white dry brushing. So it's just a matter of putting a little bit of paint on the brush and just make sure you get most of it off on the paper towel as I'm doing there. All right, so as you can see, it's just a matter of just very lightly with the white paint and the end of the paintbrush, just touching the very leading edges of, of the rock or the, the rock wall as I'm doing there. So as you can see, it sort of starts bringing up the the highlights in it uh, probably if anything might be just a little bit too much paint on that paintbrush so um, if you sort of get to that point it's just a matter of just rubbing your finger over it and it uh, will tone down so as you can see the, the, how the, some of the colorings that started coming through now as I pointed out before the the, the ground goop I don't think works with the, the leopard spotting so but it's not going to cause too many issues but um, I'm quite happy the way that rock wall's coming up it's uh, coming out quite nicely so the next section I'm working on is uh, the little rocky outcrop there so it's just a matter of yeah as I said before just working your way of put a little bit too much paint it's just rub it off with your finger um, I'm quite happy with those colorings there um, that's looking quite nice um, the way that that's that's come up there so just a matter of just picking up the highlights there and just very lightly brushing over it so we'll speed the footage up here a little bit so it's just a matter of methodically working your way across the diorama as you can see as you sort of add the more highlights it's uh, coming up quite nicely so some of those other rocks uh, probably a little bit dark down towards the bottom there but um, on the whole I'm quite happy with it so here's the the finished product so as I said, the, I quite like the way the, the gradation of the rocks there looks quite nice. I still could probably get a little bit of the work with the, the white dry brushing just to tone that down a little bit. As I stated before, as I'm not all that happy with the way it goes on. The, sorry, the leopard spotting works with the ground goop, but with rocks, it's it's a fantastic uh, little technique. So. You could probably use obviously different colours, you could variation, grey variations and the like, but it obviously just all ties together with those black that black wash at the end. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, obviously made lots of mistakes regarding this of this is the first time I've sort of used this gradation of colour, but uh, coming up quite nice or has come up quite nicely. 
now some really real close up of uh, the, the stone wall there and obviously what it looks like onto the ground goop but so the obviously the stone wall the, the colouring as I've got there shows that it's a very very old wall considering what it was like when we first started with uh, that hideously uh, burnt sienna colour you can sort of see some of that um, that orangey colour sort of come through a little bit but uh, it's obviously yeah it's toned down quite nice with the, with the brown washes Okay, so that's the end of this video. As you can see, there's just a few little close-up snapshots. That's uh, So make sure you comment below, and if you've used this technique, uh, let us know how you found it, and any other advice on for other users on how they can make their how they can make their rocks look more realistic. Make sure you subscribe, click that little bell icon to be notified of upcoming videos. Support us on Patreon, like us on Facebook and Instagram at Model Railroad Techniques. Please have a look at my new website, www. Model Railroad Techniques.com